I'm okay, right? So I uh, brought a stool today because I thought, you know, if I walk around too much, I'm just going to stress people out. And it's a whole series on being overwhelmed, right? So I thought we'd just have a conversation. Let's do that. Because here's the thing. I mean, life can be pretty overwhelming, right? There are moments, there are times in life when it just seems like everything hits all at one time. And we, we actually have phrases for this, right? When it rains, it, ah, you know, you've been there, right? It's true. There are just those moments. It just seems like one thing happens after, yeah. It just, we know what life is like when it's like this and, and when it gets overwhelming. The question we have to ask is, what do we do? I mean, there are just those moments, you know, when when life just seems like there's way too much to handle. And I know that there's that passage in the Bible somewhere where it says that God doesn't give us more than we can handle. Wow. There are sometimes I think God thinks more of me than I do. Right? Because it just seems like God, keep, or at least life, keeps dishing out a whole lot. And God seems to think I can handle it. And there are days when I'm not sure I can. Now, I'm a pretty optimistic kind of fellow, but there are days, right? There are just moments in life. Sometimes those moments last for an hour. Sometimes those moments last for days and weeks and months and on occasion years for some of us. And there are just those seasons in life. Julie and I, my wife and I often will say to each other, okay, this is just a season in life, right? And seasons come and seasons they do, right? So, you know, I, we've been in the season of mom's taxi, right? Ever have that one? Right? Everybody's got some place to be. And so all you feel like you're doing in life is just getting somebody to some rehearsal or practice or game or somewhere where they need to be because they're just, they're not driving yet. And then, of course, they get their license. Ah! Right? Or, or maybe, it's, maybe it's financial stress. Maybe it's just the stuff of life, and you work hard, and you sit down, and you look at how much is coming in and how much is going out, and you just keep asking the question, this, this isn't working, and how, God, am I going to do this? Or, or maybe it's just the, you, you work hard, and you try to make time for everybody, right? And you're hoping you could just have, like, a date night, maybe. Maybe a date night with your spouse, wouldn't that be fun? Be an interesting thing once in a while, you know? And some mornings just look like that. Some days look like that, right? And then, you know, you're driving to work and the car that you've just keep hoping and praying will hold on for another year makes this really loud sound. And you're thinking, that just can't be good. And you look in the rearview mirror and there are parts laying on the road behind you. Right, or or you get to you get to work and it's Friday and you get your paycheck and inside the paycheck is this little note that says please come and see the boss. And you're like, what's that about? Is everything okay? And there are days when you can just feel like it's overwhelming. Now I haven't even hit politics yet. But don't. <laughs> You're right. That was the talkback part, right? Yeah, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> That's good. Don't hit politics. You're right. Here's what I do want to say to you. Please vote. For God's sake, vote. Every, I mean, that's, it's who we are. It's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a part of the process. And I know, I know, I know that I don't know who I'm voting for yet. 
I would have known by now, usually, right? Enough said. And so whatever it is, whatever it's the, it, whether it's the ske- busy schedule or just trying to find a moment to breathe, we all hit those storms in life once in a while, don't we? And they come along. It, it just, uh, uh, just in our congregation this week, well, the last two weeks, we've had one person, one family who lost a baby. We've had a couple attempted suicides. We've had a cancer situation and a surgery of a very young man. We've had some incredible things happening just in the last couple of weeks. Is it a season? I don't know. I, I, we can go a long time with nobody being sick, it seems like, and, and all of a sudden we get a couple of serious situations. And here we are, walking through it together. So we just thought it would be really important once in a while to address the fact that sometimes life stinks. Sometimes life gets incredibly difficult, and sometimes, as a matter of fact, sometimes life gets a little bit overwhelming. And we thought it would be good to address it because we're convinced that this book addresses the overwhelming aspects of life, that Jesus has an answer when life gets overwhelming. And so we're going to focus what, this morning on what it looks like to, to manage through the storms. But we're also going to talk about worry and we're going to talk about stress, and we're going to po- talk about trust over the next couple of weeks. So please don't miss any of these. And if you do, make sure you go online, check out our YouTube page, and get caught up. And, because I, I think it's important for us to understand what it's like when the storms hit, and when we get overwhelmed. And we know what storms are like. I used to, when I was in the military, I lived in, on the coast in North Carolina, and in the time I was there, I, we... we we managed to go through several hurricanes. Um, I was in a helicopter squadron, so we had to we had to bring all the helicopters into these huge hangars, and you know we folded the wings up and we'd put them in nice and tight and try to get them all in outside of the of the weather because you didn't want any damage to happen, right? Every once in a while, we we would evacuate people out of their homes. And that just happened recently. We know what it's like when storms hit. We've all kind of been there, right? Some of you have been through some storms in life. Some of you have had to pick up the pieces or mop up the water or pump out the water. We've all had some of those kinds of things happen, and it can get pretty nasty, right? One of the things our youth ministry did for several years is there was a series of hurricanes that went through Florida, Year after year after year, hurricanes would just come across Florida and just wipe things out. And it, it, it became a joke in Florida that the national flag was the blue tarp. Because everybody had blue tarps. You, you flew into Orlando and half the houses in Orlando had blue tarps on their roofs. And so our student ministry for, for about five years straight went into Orlando and did work on houses to help rebuild them to the sto- after the storms. Because sometimes God calls us to be there during the storms, doesn't he? Sometimes the storms look like a really bad diagnosis from a doctor. Sometimes the storms look like the loss of a child or a spouse who's leaving or a loss of a job. And all these things have some way of disrupting our lives, right? They, they get us out of the natural patterns that we like to be in. And we will sometimes say, Can it, can't we just go back to normal? Or can't we just go back to the way it used to be? Because the storms leave us having to readjust our lives and think differently about who we are and how we're going to live our lives. And how we handle the storms, I think, is something that God wants us to wrestle with. Because ultimately, we... We offer a testimony to the world when we go through storms. People are watching to see if we're going to make it. <laughs> They're watching to see if it's going to be okay. They're watching to see if the God that we, that we believe in is actually going to come through. Because they need to see that. People need to see that God's going to show up and that, that Jesus can handle the storm. And so we chose a passage this morning that's one that's near to my heart because I've been on the Sea of Galilee. This is a passage that 
that uh, I want to give you just a little bit of background to. Uh, the sea, first off, let me ask you, where is Jesus born? What town is he born in? So Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is south of Jerusalem, right? And, and so for some reason, God calls Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. And the reason is because there's a census happening, right? And, and Joseph needs to go to Bethlehem because that's his hometown. And so he's born in Bethlehem. But that's not where he grows up. Where does Jesus grow up? Who knows? In Nazareth, right? If there were kids in the room, they would know. He's, he grows up in a town called Nazareth. Now, Nazareth is north in, in the region of Israel. It's up in the Galilean Sea region. And the Galilean is, that region is so vastly different than the region around Jerusalem. The region, the region around Jerusalem and Bethlehem is dry and arid. It's desert. And all the houses down there are, are made of this uh, cement that's mixed with sand. And so most of the houses look kind of this sandy color, right? But you get up into the Galilee, and the Galilean region gets lots of rain, and it has the Galilean Sea, and so it's, it's an incredibly lush area, and there are all kinds of places where there are fruits and vegetables being grown. And then, of course, there's the Sea of Galilee, and there's fishermen, even to this very day, who are out on the Sea of Galilee every single day. And so the story is that Jesus has preaching along the Sea of Galilee. As a matter of fact, you go all the way back to Mark chapter 1, verse 35. It says, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up before daybreak the next morning. He's up before the sun, right? And Jesus goes out to an isolated place to pray. And then later they find him and he says, let's go over to the Galilee and let's preach in the synagogues. Let's talk to the people who are there. And so he's, it says that he's by the Sea of Galilee. Over in chapter 4, it says he's along the seashore. And it says that there's such a large crowd that's shown up to listen to him that he actually has to get put into a boat and put out into the water just a little bit so that, so that the people can hear him because they're crowding and pushing him so hard because they want to hear him and they want to be close to him. And so he gets in this boat and they push him out just a little bit into the water. And from that boat, he's talking to the crowds, and there he tells the, the, the parable of the farmer scattering seeds. He tells the parable of the lamp. You know, nobody puts a light under a lamp, right, and, and hides it. Uh, he, the, the mustard seed parable comes out of this whole place, and that many of you know. And, and then he, and he says to his disciples, as the day gets long, right, and he's tired, and he's been speaking all day long before sunrise so he says to his disciples let's put out get in the boat let's put out and let's go across the sea to the other side because I want to see people over there tomorrow I got some people over there tomorrow that I want to go see and and so here's what you need to know the Galilean Sea is 13 miles long and eight miles wide it's not a big sea right in our estimate that's not a sea that would be you know raised town Lake Raystown, right? It's about that size. But here's the unique piece about the, the Galilean Sea. It sits in this, in, in this valley, and the mountains around it are carved in such a way by nature, carved in such a way that there are these troughs in between some of the, some of the mountain peaks. And, and through those troughs, the wind comes barreling down through. And, uh, imagine, here's... Here, Here's the best way I can describe it. You, you know that when you're out in the wind, you feel the natural wind, but it's kind of dissipated because it's, it's out in the open. But when you get into a doorway or when you get into a narrow way or when you get into an alleyway, that wind seems to become more intense, right? Because it's pushing through that narrow passage. And the wind seems much more intense there. Well, that's what happens on the Sea of Galilee. That wind comes down over the plains, comes in off of the, the Mediterranean, comes pushing in over the plains of Israel, and then hits those valleys and starts getting compressed. And that wind starts pushing into the Sea of Galilee. And within 15 to 20 minutes, a storm that wasn't there can all of a sudden arrive and completely surprise you out on the sea. 
And so what's happening is that Jesus with his disciples, it's the end of the day, right? And he gets into the boat and he lays down and he's going to fall asleep. And, the, and the, half of these guys are fishermen, right? So they've been on the Sea of Galilee before. They know how to handle a boat. So they put the sails up and they start working their way across this eight-mile stretch from one side of the Galilean Sea to the other. I don't know about you. I, I, I don't sail a whole lot. I've done it like twice in my life. In, in a small boat with a friend who had a boat and, and you have to t- kind of run the sails with the wind and all that sort of stuff and it takes a while. So it's going to take them a while to get from one side of the Sea of Galilee to the other. That's eight miles. And they're not going to travel very fast. And so Jesus says, I, I'm going to crash, guys. I've been preaching all day. You know, the human side of him is tired and so he lays down and it says actually he's, he's got his head on a cushion and he's in the back of the boat. And so they're kind of leaving Jesus back there in the back of the boat, and they're all talking about, oh, did you hear that story that he told today? Did you hear that parable he told today? And they're talking, and they're making sure the sails are all working. And and within a very short period of time, one of the storms starts moving in. Now, there's... These guys are fishermen, and they've been on the sea before, right? And so the storm starts moving in, and they start doing all the adjustments, and they start making sure everything's going to be okay, but the storm keeps getting worse, and they start taking on water. And it says, like, like them, there are other boats out there, and, and everybody starts bailing water. And it's getting difficult, and it's getting challenging, and they're bailing water, and, and the, the sails are getting beat up. And they're, I don't know how far out, it doesn't tell us how far out into the Sea of Galilee it is, but, but here's what I begin to understand as I start reading this. They're starting to get worried. And the unpredictable nature of the Sea of Galilee has surprised them once again. And all of a sudden, they're getting worried. They're getting worried that they may not survive this. They know. They know the potential. Because isn't that the way it is with storms? They're incredibly unpredictable. They can come up within moments, and they can be life-changing and devastating. Storms can come up in a moment. They're completely unpredictable. And they can devastate your life. I was driving south on Route 81 on Wednesday. I had to go, go to a meeting over in Mechanicsburg. And, and so I told Barb, I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave. I never make it there on time. I never give myself enough time. So I gave myself a half an hour to get to the other side of Mechanicsburg from here. And, uh, and I said, you know, I, I've got enough gas to get there. I'll just get, I'll pick up gas on the way home. So it's Wednesday, and I don't know if you remember the week or not, but on Wednesday, I got um, just south of the Route 81 bridge near the 581 split, right? And traffic came to an absolute halt. And I noticed that on the northbound side of the road, there was no traffic at all. <clears throat> and, I, and so I'm sitting there watching my gas gauge. And fortunately, in my vehicle, I have one of those little buttons I can push to tell me how many miles I have left. I had eight miles left. And I'm dead in traffic. Some of you are smiling like, yeah, this is going to be a good story. Now, I'm fortunate because as it went to four miles left and then the two miles left, and I'm just close to the 581 split, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to go all the way down to 114. I'm going to get off here at 581, see what I can do. My, my reserve two-gallon tank kicked in. I didn't know I had a reserve two-gallon tank. But all of a sudden it jumped and said, I now have 16 miles left. Yes, my truck goes through gas like there's no tomorrow. And so two, two gallons, I got 16 miles. Do the math on that one, right? And so I'm sitting in traffic and I'm getting closer and closer because I'm inching toward the 581 split, right? Now I've got 14 miles left. Now I've got 12 miles left. I'm in the reserve tank. Now I've got 10 miles left. I'm not on 581 yet. I'm still inching. And I'm thinking, this is not good. And all of a sudden, traffic broke open. And I was able to get off and take 581 and go to a local gas station quickly. I didn't know that was what my day was going to involve. But here's what I thought about. In relationship to that situation, and I can look at that as a storm, but it was fairly minor, right? In relationship to the situation, I noticed that Lifeline was in the air. And I read later, I heard later that it was not a good day for somebody. Yesterday, I was in Shippensburg doing a consultation with a church, and on my way back, I hit the spot. 
on the road where the accident had been. It looked like a war zone. It was bad. Both lanes charred. The whole median burnt and devastated. I can't imagine that within a split second, somebody's life changed forever. Right? Unpredictable and devastating. And the men in the boat with Jesus are thinking, this is what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. Everything is changing. It's come up in an unpredictable manner. And these guys are in this boat. This is probably about the size of the boat, right? Not a big boat. And they're bailing water. And they've grown up on the sea, but they also know that this is dangerous. They've, they've probably known families who've lost people on the sea. And they're starting to get worried. And you know what happens when you start to get worried, right? And the storm is coming in, right? You start to panic. And that's what they do. They start to panic and they start to, fe- to have fear because that's our reaction when life feels like we're out of control. And we start to panic and we start to get afraid. And that's exactly what happens to these guys. They're bailing water. They're wondering what's going to go, what, what's going to happen next, what's going to come along. And they're panicking and they have these, this amazing fear. That's your next teaching note for us this morning. Because panic and fear are our reactions when we lose control. And that's what happens to these guys. They're panicking and they, they have this incredible fear. So much so, they're so worried that they look to Jesus and they say something that maybe we have never thought of saying, or, but maybe we've, we've wondered. <laughs> they look at Jesus and they say, teacher, don't you care? Don't you care? Don't you care about what's going on down here? Don't you care about what's happening in the world today? Don't you care about what seems to be the, the tremendous things that are happening to people in other countries who believe in you and who are getting killed? Don't you care? Don't you care? They, they, let me finish their sentence. Don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you care that we're going to die? Don't you care that I feel like I'm going down for the last time and I don't know if I can hold my breath that long anymore? Don't you care? Now, these are the guys who are physically living out their life with Jesus, asking him that question. They have watched him do miracles. They have listened to his preaching, and yet they are feeling overwhelmed at this moment. And all they know is that the Jesus they believe in, the Jesus they think might be the guy, is sound asleep. And there are times, right, in your life and in mine that we get to just get overwhelmed and it feels like Jesus might just be asleep. When we're overwhelmed, there are times when it feels like Jesus is taking a nap. Like, don't you care? Are you asleep at the wheel? Or, or have you checked out on me? Why am I going through this? Why is life so difficult? Why is there such a challenge? And Jesus offers us this Striking contrast. Because you see, they're all afraid. They're convinced that life could end right here, right now. And Jesus is asleep. It's like, how can you be sleeping right now? How can you be... How can you even sleep in this weather? Storms all over the place. It's got this boat going crazy. How can you... The disciples look at Jesus and think that maybe he just doesn't care. When the truth is just the opposite. For them, it's an all-hands-on-deck moment. And so they shake him and wake him up, right? Come on, we need help bailing water. Don't you care what's going on to the rest of us? Maybe, Maybe you can pull out one of those miracles you got in your pocket, right? But see, Jesus knows something that they don't know. You see, that's the wonderful thing about God. He knows everything. Notice what Jesus says to his disciples because he knows something they don't know and here's what he knows. He says to them, let's cross to the other side of the lake. In verse 35. 
Let's cross to the other side of the lake. See, see, that's what Jesus knows. We're going to the other side of the lake. Now, he didn't say to his disciples, let's get in this boat and let's go drown. Let's get in the boat and, oh, by the way, we're not going to make it. That's not what he says. He knows they're going to make it. He already knows. Just like he knows that you're going to make it. Just like he knows that it's going to leave scars and it's going to leave marks. But you're going to make it to the other side. And it's going to be okay. But you see, what we do is what the disciples did. They forget that he said we're going to make it. And they start looking at the storm instead. And that's what we do, right? When the storms come along, we start focusing in on the storms. So much so that we can't see God anymore can't hear what he says it's like we put blinders on right you know like they do with the horses it's like all we can see is the storm and we can't see what God is doing and we lose sight of God in the middle of the storm and that's what the storms can do in our lives it can it can take us off focus on what God wants you see Jesus had a plan he's going to the other side guys that's his plan and the disciples are like, no, we're going down. This is not going to be good. We're not going to make it to the other side. And Jesus does something miraculous. He calms the seas and tells the storm to stop. Right? It's over. I don't know if you've ever had that kind of miracle. I don't know if you've ever had that moment when you thought, this is not going to turn out well. But it did. And everything was okay. And you stopped and, and you couldn't figure out why. I don't know if you've had one of those moments when you thought that within a split second, everything could have been different. I've had those moments. And you have probably have had them too. And I wonder if there have been times in your life when God came along and calmed the storm and said, it's going to be okay, we're going to get to the other side together. It's going to be all right. See, the incredible power of Jesus sitting in that boat that day was that he had the power to calm the storm, right? Isn't that our God? I mean, I don't know about you, I need a God who can calm storms. My God needs to be that big. My God needs to be so big that he can calm the storms in my life with a word. Now, this is the same God, by the way, who creates everything with a word. Go back to Genesis, and it says that God spoke and things became, that things were created simply because God spoke. So this is the same God who can speak and calm the seas, right? I need God to be that big because sometimes the storms are that big. And I need my God to be big enough to be able to say, done, this is over, it's all going to be all right. Jesus has that power. And he exercises that power with his disciples in that boat. So much so, surprises them so much so that, they're, that they ask the question, who is this guy? Who is this guy? I mean, yeah, he's a great teacher. Yeah, he's a rabbi. Yeah, he might be the one we've been looking for. But who is this guy who can speak and storms are calmed and seas become crystal clear? That's the God I need. Because you see, I need a God who can not just calm the storms, but who can remind me that in the storms, he's got me. It's all going to be okay. I need the God who who says to me, I will give you the strength to carry on. We're going to go through this together. And I'm going to be right there with you. That's who Jesus is for me. And I have to constantly remember that through the storms, right? Because the storms will take me off track if I let them. And I can panic and I can get all excited about the storms in life. But if I remember who Jesus is, I remember that I have the strength to carry on. To push through. To get to the other side. I don't know if you're going through a storm right now. 
I don't know if there's something major happening in your life or something minor. I don't know what it might be. I don't know if you feel like, gosh, if one more thing happens, I'm done. I don't know if you feel like you're that close to the end of your rope. I don't know. But here's what I do know. God knows just how close you are. Because he's in the boat with you. Isn't that good to know? Isn't it good to know that God's in the boat with us? Isn't it just good to, go to God, good to know that God didn't abandon us and never will? He's in the boat walking through the storm with us with the power and the ability to calm the storm. Now I know that some of you are saying, well, what happens if he doesn't calm the storm? Let me just say, stay with us in this series. There's going to be more, and we're going to talk more about those kinds of things, because there are moments when it feels like the storm just never ends, doesn't it? And we're going to talk about that. Today, it's, it, let it be enough to know that the Savior of the world is in the storm with you, and he's not leaving, and he's going to get us to the other side no matter what. Amen? Amen.